Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about the passive transport that we have learned in class. So what you're going to do with your uh, mega sheet, you'll notice that your mega sheet has folds. You can kind of sort of see mine. Um, and it's divided like into four columns. So one, one, two, three, four. And we're going to be writing in this first and second column today. Let's get started. So in this first column right here, we're going to be talking about simple diffusion. So in the very first column, simple diffusion. I'm doing this in red because I had colored in the phospholipid tails, which are hydrophobic or nonpolar in red. I'm going to do the same thing for simple diffusion because simple diffusion is going to apply to substances, molecules that are small and nonpolar. So with simple diffusion, substances are going to move from high concentration to low concentration. But most of the time, you're going to see that written in a certain way, especially on MCQ questions. You'll see it written as down the concentration gradient. Sometimes you'll even see it written as along or with, it, with the concentration gradient. Now, quick chemistry lesson. Whenever you see brackets written like this, it's referring to the concentration of something. And so I use this a lot in um, our notes. You can use this on the AP exam. This is accepted by the scientific community. So I'm going to write concentration gradient like this. So whenever you see these brackets, it means the concentration. So in this case, it's concentration gradient. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind is that molecules have movement or are moving. They, they call that the kinetic energy in your homework. You also know that the movement of molecules is random. So with simple diffusion, there's not ATP involved. What's driving or allowing simple diffusion to happen is the movement of the molecules themselves. And the movement of those molecules is going to contribute to that concentration gradient. So technically speaking, the energy for simple diffusion is going to come from that concentration gradient. And sometimes students are unsure about what that means. A concentration gradient simply means that you have one area, let's say that this is a cell, and inside the cell, let's say it's uh, five parts per million of a molecule or parts per trillion, whatever the unit is. And then on the other side of this, so this would be the membrane right here. And on the other side of the membrane, you have a different concentration. Let's say that this is 123. So the fact that there is a difference on the amount of substance inside the cell versus outside the cell means that there's a concentration gradient. And substances are going to move from high concentration to low concentration. So let's look at an example of simple diffusion. First, you need to remember that this is going to apply to small nonpolar molecules. So a great example would be something like carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is small. It's only made up of three atoms. And anything on the periodic table is going to be considered small. Large molecules is when you get to something like the macromolecules. So large is what macro means. So carbon dioxide is small and it's nonpolar. And I know it's nonpolar because up here, there's no charge written. There's no plus or minus written here. So this is a uncharged or nonpolar molecule. And so let's say carbon dioxide needs to move across the membrane. So let's say that on this side of the membrane, there's a high concentration of carbon dioxide. So it's gonna want to go across the membrane down its concentration gradient. In other words, from high concentration to low concentration. So what that means for carbon dioxide, because it's small and nonpolar, it's just going to be able to squeeze past the phospholipid bilayer in between the molecules themselves, and the hydrophobic tails that are right here are not going to stop it. So this will go from high to low concentration or down its concentration gradient by simply diffusing across the membrane. Now let's contrast this to facilitated diffusion. We're going to do this in the second panel that you have right here. Do leave, make sure we're leaving space down at the bottom. We're going to be writing a lot of, of other things. Um, so we're going to be doing facilitated diffusion right here. 
Now, facilitated diffusion is similar to uh, simple diffusion. The difference is with facilitated diffusion, we're going to be talking about polar and larger molecules. So I'm doing this one in blue because blue reminds me of the blue phospholipid heads that we colored um, earlier. And they we colored those blue because they like water. They're hydrophilic. Substances are still going to move down their concentration gradient, just like it was for simple diffusion. And just like with simple diffusion, the energy is going to come from the concentration gradient itself, the difference on either side. That's what's going to cause substances to move. They're going to be moving down or from high to low with that concentration gradient. The difference with facilitated diffusion is that it requires a channel because those polar molecules and even those large molecules are not gonna be able to pass the hydrophobic tails of the membrane. So the polar molecule I'm gonna show for this example is going to be water. And since water is polar, it's not gonna be able to pass the hydrophobic tails of the membrane. And so in order to pass, it needs a special channel to be able to pass through a transmembrane protein. And the name of this channel is aquaporin because the, all channels are specific. And this one specifically allows water to pass through. Now, what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna create that concentration gradient. In other words, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna write that there's a difference on either side of this membrane when it comes to the concentration of water or how much water. So on this side of the membrane, I'm gonna say it's a low concentration. And on this side of the membrane, I'm gonna say it's a high concentration. So remember that facilitated diffusion is down the concentration gradient, but it's a little tricky because if you look at the directions of the arrows, so this is the high concentration, this is the low concentration. That means when we say water is moving down its concentration gradient, we would draw the arrow like this, pointing upward. And don't let that confuse you. That arrow doesn't indicate up and down, like top and bottom it indicates which direction the molecules are moving. So you've got to pay attention to this right here, when it tells you that this is high concentration to low concentration. That means we're going down the concentration gradient. But in the case of water, it's got to go through this special aquaporin to allow it to pass through. Otherwise, the tails would have stopped it. Okay, and that's it. So these two panels represent our debrief on passive transport. Remember, passive transport, the energy is coming from the concentration gradient itself, and the molecules are moving in both directions. However, we always notice a net or more of the movement for the molecules going down their concentration gradient. In other words, from high to low. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye.